this one will be a little bit longer, a little bit more to cover. One thing as we're going through our podcast, sorry about that, remember we're getting used to block schedule two, so if sometimes I say tomorrow, I'm not really sure. We, um, Mrs. Roland and I are really not sure when you're going to be watching them. So you know what we mean the next time we see you. When we say tomorrow, you just put into the blank the next time we see you depending on A or B, because it's just going to confuzzle my brain to try to keep everything 100% straight, and obviously I cannot know who I'm talking to right now. Okay, so the sciences. What we're going to talk about is what is really chemistry going to be like for you this year. So chemistry is defined as the study of matter and the changes it undergoes. Right here, changes. That is where you guys have fun. Um, you guys have fun, meaning we, as teachers, this is why we teach it also, is because changes, chemical changes can be fun. They can sometimes be exciting. You know what? They can also be really boring. So please don't think every lab, everything we're going to do is involves fire and explosions. That, most of the time, we do not want fire to happen in the lab. Okay, so let's do some definitions. I'm assuming this is review. It should be some middle school definitions. Matter is just anything that has mass and takes up space. So it's just, okay, two things have to happen. So look at this, you have to have mass and it has to take up space as you're going through that. Okay, cool, that's the definition of matter. What's the definition of mass? Um, how much matter you have? So the measure of the amount of matter, what? Okay, just sometimes those definitions happen within itself. Matter is what you're made up of. Mass, how much of the stuff you have. If we want to simplify it. So here's kind of my challenge to you. I want you to think about this. Here's your challenge question. Is air matter? If we classify air, is it matter? I can't see it, I can't taste it. Is air matter? I want you to think about, you don't have to go out and prove this, but I want you to think about, be prepared to discuss when we see you next, how you could prove this. Going back up and remembering you have to prove both of these. Does it have mass and does it take up a space? Be prepared, we could call on you. Um, mass is different than weight, okay? A lot of times they get used interchangeably. I will accidentally say weigh something when you're really getting the mass of it. Weight is technically, it's a force. It's a force that has gravity pulling down on you. That's why your weight will change when you go to the moon. The amount of mass you have, the size of yourself, how much you are made up of won't change, but you're not gonna feel as much force on you when you go to the moon, therefore your weight will not be as much. Okay, this year our periodic table is kind of like our alphabet. That we will be using a lot. Now, to be perfectly honest, we may not use it a lot, a lot, a lot until the next uh, probably two weeks, three weeks into it. I can tell you second semester comes a time you do not take a test without a periodic table. So let's go through again. I know eighth grade, I believe you've had this, so this should be kind of a quick review and we will definitely go into it a lot more depth. But our assumption, when we talk about the periodic table, we talk about the groups, we're gonna talk about the families. You need to know groups go up and down. They go up and down. So if I talk about group one, group two, group three, group 18, you're looking at the number at the top of the periodic table and you know that you're looking down the column, okay? So otherwise, columns. They're called families because just like families, a lot of times have similar properties. The groups, these elements also have similar properties. And we will definitely spend a lot more time going through this. So some groups we expect you to know the name of. Alkali, metals is group one. Halogens are group two, or excuse me, 17, hello. And the noble gases are group 18. There's going to be more, but you'll get pretty comfortable that our expectation, if Mrs. Rowland said, hey, everybody, we're at, look at the halogens. What halogen is doing, what halogen, what halogen, you should be looking at group 17. Oh, look it, I had already put that in. Oh, well, now you have it twice if so you can't read my writing. Okay, the periods, they are the rows. Okay, they're the horizontal rows. 
we don't name them. We don't give them names because they are not as consistent. So if you look at this, group one are very, very, very active metals, blow up when you get in water. Noble gases are very, very inert. Inert means they do not react. No consistency as you go across the period. Okay, so let's look at some general properties of how things get classified. So if I classify something as a metal, it should have different, it should have these properties for a metal. It should be a good conductor of heat and electricity. It should be malleable. Here's a good vocab word. Vocab, highlight. Malleable means it's able to roll into a hammer or you can pound it into sheets. Ductile, okay, another vocab word. It can be drawn into fine wire, okay? You can pull it into wire, so you have copper wire, um, there's iron wire and different types of wire, and we will talk about the bonding and why that happens um, later on in the year. And they say they tend to be solids. They tend to be solids because on in there, there is HG, which is mercury. Oh, HG is mercury. We know where that come from. Did I mention that you will have a um, element quiz that's going to be starting next week? Quiz? Did I say quiz? I mean quizzes. We have several quizzes that we'll be using, and we will give you more information about those quizzes tomorrow as we start looking at the elements some more. So don't worry, we will fill you in. Okay, there are some of the names you need to know. We already talked about one up above, but now you can make sure you have it written down. Okay, group one is known as the alkali metals. Okay, be very, very, very careful. Very, 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 very careful. Hydrogen, which is the very first element, and it is in group one, is not a metal. Hydrogen is a gas. A gas is not malleable, it is not ductile, it does not have any of the properties that it is. You know what, let's go back. There's another one I want you to add here. Luster, and luster means it is shiny. Oops, shiny. Metals are shiny, it's another property. Okay, hydrogen gas is not shiny. It is not a metal. So you can not just say that hydrogen is an alkaline metal. Group two, they are your earth metals, alkaline earth metals. Look at group two. We should have given you a periodic table, or you should have picked up a periodic table just to use with this podcast, and I should have said in the beginning, why don't you grab it out? So if you don't have it out, if you didn't remember to grab it out, why don't you pause me real quick and go find your periodic table? Because it will really help on the notes as you can kind of look at your periodic table as we go through these notes. So group two, and in fact, this is your periodic table. Write notes on it. You can write what you want on it, transfer information from your packet to your periodic table. Okay, so group two, alkaline earth metals. And then all of group 3 through 12, so I'm looking at the numbers top of the periodic tables, those are called transition metals. And the reason they're called transition is when we start looking at their oxidation number or their charges, they're not consistent. They tend to change and have some variables, so they can, we say that they change, so they're a transition metal. Okay, the non-metals, look at their definitions. Poor conductor of heat and electricity, pretty much if it's not a metal. Gases, they can be gases, liquids, or solids. You have a whole variety of them. And because of this, we tend to not have, can't generalize the properties like we do in a metals. You have many fewer non-metals than metals. And I am gonna show you how we know that. So this is really important. Stair step divides the two, because when you get out, you know, you have out your periodic table, you need to draw this stair step on your own periodic table. So there's two groups of non-metals we expect you to know. Group 17, which we talked about a little bit earlier, that's the halogens. They're the halogens. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Um, I don't have it in front of me. Um, noble gases is group 18. The noble gases, the snobs of the periodic table, they don't react with anybody. Um, a word we use with them a lot, inert. Inert means they are not reactive. They're nobility, they're the snobs. 
We'll talk about why they're the snobs. One thing you're going to notice in chemistry, it's really, 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 really hard sometimes because I can't show you an atom. Mrs. Rowland can't pull up an atom. I can't pull up an atom. So we, a lot of times, use a lot of analogies. We give them personalities. We try things to make it a little bit easier to understand. So when I talk about it being a personality, obviously I know it really doesn't have a person. The nice thing about the noble gases, because they don't react, we get to use them in a lot of pretty signs because we know the signs aren't going to blow up. You try putting hydrogen in a sign, and that could be a little bit more exciting. Okay, metalloids. They're kind of properties of both. They are a blend of metals and non-metals. Um, sometimes they're actually even called semiconductors, right here. Some older books, older meaning sometimes I'll call it, yes, older, we'll call them semiconductors. Okay, so there are both sides of this mysterious stair step that we're talking about again. They have some characteristics of metals and non-metals. We will show you some when we start looking at it. Probably silicon is one of my favorite. It's very shiny, but yet it's very crumbly like a rock, and it's not nearly as dense. All of the metalloids are solid. They're called semiconductors, and where you've probably heard of them is they're used in the computer industry a lot because they do conduct electricity, but they're a lighter weight, and just they have some of the properties are better, better suited to the computer industry. Okay, a couple things when we start writing, and this means for the quiz, okay? To remember, for the quizzes, test. Oh, heck, for the rest of the year. Let's scratch that out, not just for quizzes, for the rest of the year. Okay, capitalization matters, because big time. If you write capital C, little o, I know that that's cobalt. If you write capital C, capital O, that is carbon monoxide. Okay, this is kind of purplish, grayish, purplish, kind of cool. This is gonna kill you, big difference. So if you're used to writing double capitals, knock it off, at least for chemistry when we're starting to write our language. Okay, there's some elements you're going to hear us talk about over and over again, so we might as well mention them now. These seven elements are diatomic, which means they're kind of like girls who go to the bathroom, they kind of need a buddy. So when these seven elements exist, they exist, when we're going to start writing them, we will write them with a two, and this just means there's two atoms. That's where the di, meaning two, two atoms comes from. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine. We will be spending a lot more time with this and we'll talk about some different ways you can remember these because you do need to remember these. Okay, you have your periodic table and this is probably where I would transfer some of the information of the periodic table. What do you think is important from this that um, we need to know? What do I think is important? What does Mrs. Rowland think is important? Okay, first thing, let's draw on this stair step. Okay, ready? Oh, this is good. Start at the first, and you just kind of make start making the stairs. So. That's pretty. Maybe you can make yours a little bit better. Okay. So when you make your stair step, as we're looking, you can make a little, you can color it, you can do something, however you want to do it. These are the metalloids that we talked about. Acetine, not really so much. Those are the metalloids that we talked about. But I want you to notice something. I did not circle aluminum. Aluminum is not a metalloid. Aluminum is a metal. Don't circle that one. So hopefully you can transfer this to your periodic table that we gave you as we're going through it. Okay, what else do I think is important to know? Okay, this is where, oh my gosh, if you have colors or highlighters, this can definitely be good. Okay, group one. Group one, remember, are the alkalis. What else did we know? Group two, okay, these were the alkaline earth metals. Whoops, wow, I can't spell earth. Okay, what else did we do? Let's see, I did that color. Sorry if I didn't call the color. What else? This is the noble gases, because that is group 18. 
And what else do we have? Light blue. Okay, halogens. Obviously, you don't have to transfer all of this. It might get kind of messy. Okay, so we circled the metalloids. So that means, and you can kind of decide how you want to do it. I'm scribbling. Okay, and where's my pen? This. Don't forget. Okay, so my light blue scribbles are my non metals. So that means everything else is a metal. That might be easier because if you start putting all of those in, I think it could get a little messy. So if you know your non metals, the rest are metals. Okay, so that means we forgot to label these. This is where we talked about 3 through 12, all the way to here. Okay, these. And I color pretty. Okay, these are your transition metals. And then these are actually, these two rows are called the inner transition metals. And when we start looking at trends and really start looking at the periodic table, we'll show where this two rows, where they kind of fit into there. Because if you look at your numbers, they're right here. We should pull out that periodic table and squeeze those guys in the middle, looking through that. Okay, tomorrow, meaning the next day we see you, we will be looking more at the elements and be exploring and we will fill you in a little bit more about the element quizzes and be looking at some more of the matter. So we are really getting started on our chemistry. So we will see you the next day in class.